Hey, Richard, uh, thank you for coming in today. You're, you're doing just tremendous work. You, you have a history of, of contributions. So thank you for sharing your insights with my audience. Yeah, that's okay. No problem. So Richard, uh, can you give me some background of, of, of your history in terms of education and, and the different sort of roles that have been playing? And then we'll go to the current time and what's happening. That'll be another question. Yeah, no, sure. So my background is 3D measurement of the body which I've been doing for the best part of 25 years now, um, used to use the technology to measure for clothing fit, which is you know quite a standard uh, accepted use of the technology. And then in about 2004, I suddenly realized that you could effectively reverse engineer the technology to measure the inside of the body rather than the outside of the body. And we invented the body volume index as opposed to the body mass index for the measurement of weight, but the measurement of partial weight. So basically, depending on someone's body shape, we can work out where the weight is and therefore what the risk of that is to their health. So we've been working for the past 15 years on developing that technology, which is now complete. Uh, Mayo Clinic, who are based in the US, have done most of the validation and the Medical Research Council in the UK. And uh, yeah, it's very exciting. Uh, the, the, it, I didn't expect it to take so long, but uh, it is now complete. So, are, are you like an engineer by training, or something like that? Or yeah, I'd, I'd say an engineer, sort of a three D engineer. Yeah, and and data data collection. I mean, years ago, the business used to be a sort of straightforward research company, researching products and branding and markets and that sort of thing and we got asked to do a big uh research sizing project for marks and spencers which is a big uk retailer and we ended up doing four projects for them uh, and then we did the national sizing survey for the uk government which was the first one actually in the world and then from that as the technology we've adapted to to measure health risks so yeah, we can, we, we, you know, some obvious, really obvious things to the human eye, like, you know, measuring the abdomen volume. You know, most people accept that if you've got too much weight around the middle, uh, you know, it's a bad health risk, but we can actually measure it digitally and take it out and work out how much it weighs. Okay, so you're, you're talking about existing sort of programs of BMI, you know, body mass index that's been used for decades, and now you're suggesting... Yeah this uh, 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 volume index, uh, which you uh, got a patent, I think, uh, from what I understand, and you've done Yeah, yeah we have, yeah, we've got, um, well, a European-wide patent and the US patent, uh, and that covers any part volume ratio. So, for example, someone who's a bodybuilder who have more chest volume than abdomen volume, so hasn't got a health risk, whereas someone like me who's got too much around the middle, uh, it will work out what the risk is. So that's all patented and trademarked. And then, yeah, BVI is in a really interesting position because the body mass index works to a degree for populations. It was designed for measuring populations. It was never designed to measure individuals. Um, and the guy who invented it um, is a Belgian mathematician. Um, but he was... Um, he was in the 1800s. So it was actually invented in 1835. Uh, but to his credit, yeah, he didn't have computers. He didn't have AI. He didn't have spreadsheets that you could analyze data. Um, and BMI was meant to be used for population assessment. Um, and it just looks at height and weight. It doesn't take body shape into account. So the body volume index actually takes body shape into the account now. And then, therefore, uh, a much higher correlation in terms of overall health and things like that, I assume. Very much so, yeah. So well, yeah, what we can see with the human eye, you can look at someone and you can tell, based on their body shape and their weight distribution, if they've got a health risk or not. Um, and obviously, for men and women, that's different. It's different for different ethnic groups. It's different for people of different ages. So all of those factors can be taken into account with data that effectively divides the body into sections and then works out where the weight is, uh, and therefore, you know, where you're carrying your weight um, determines what your health risk is. 
So the, uh, the algorithms that you develop have the ability to do this. And are you suggesting then that it, it's available to consumer product or something that's really easy and, and, and expensive to distribute globally? Yeah, when, when we first started this, we're, the technology was quite cumbersome. We had full body scanners, which were very good, but not feasible to deploy at scale. But now the system uh, is basically relies on just two images of a person, a front image and a side image. And then from that, that creates a 3D model. And then from that, we can extract all of the data. So it means that people uh, like us now, you can use a front facing camera on a smartphone, uh, take two pictures, either of someone else or in the privacy of your own home using the front camera. And then from that, that collects all the data. And it's it's completely scalable now because we've we kind of rewritten the back end server structure uh, to be ultimately scalable. So it measures, the system measures at the moment about 300 people in a minute, um, irrespective of where they are. And obviously using GPS and using the internet, you know, it can be used wherever there's a phone signal. And then is there a validation of using this volume index over the, the mass index? Have there been studies around the world suggesting that this is something that uh, should be done? Are there papers coming out that are also validating this work as well? Yes, there are. There's, there's some published, um, which I think are on the website, on the BVI website. Uh, the the key one, I think, is that uh, there's a machine called a BOD pod, which is seen as the gold standard for volume. Uh, and there's a paper published by Mayo Clinic, which validates that on 1,200 patients, and it has a 97% correlation, so we know it works. Um, and then the upcoming paper that Mayo Clinic are publishing, I believe in June, uh, is to do with the the abstract has been published, so I'm happy to share that with you. Uh, and uh, that that is about the prediction of metabolic risk. So that's uh, cardiovascular disease, uh, diabetes and hypertension. And they have compared on 1,200 patients the body mass index and the body volume index, and they believe, I think it's about 19% improvement on BMI uh, that BVI is as a predictor of cardiovascular hypertension and diabetes risk. And then, um, you know, there's entities like the World Health Organization, which are independent, and, and have they been trying some of this in different countries around the world or, or not? Or is it too early? Uh, yeah, they have. Yeah, we, I did a presentation in, God, when was that? December 2017 uh, in Geneva to WHO. They then set up trials in Africa and India uh, with children. That was, that was fascinating because they said, we want to see if it works on children and we want it to be used in very challenging environments that perhaps are not as infrastructure-wise set up in the same way as perhaps, you know, a lot of the Northern Hemisphere is. Um, and, yeah, those trials have been done over three years. Um, WHO are not involved at the moment, but they were very supportive of those trials. Um, and, yeah, I think they posted it on their website at the time. Uh, but, yeah, it's, it's very exciting because I think everybody realises that BMI, it's okay, but, you know, in this day and age, you know, OK isn't isn't good enough, really. So, uh, yeah, they've been very supportive. So, Richard, I, I mean, this is really uh, amazing. Could you summarize really all of the validation, why this is so important? Why does it give, uh, uh, you know, very good health indicators and, and help and preventative health? And how you've integrated this solution that you created, that you found and and based on your research, if you can combine that and summarize it. Yeah, uh, I suppose when I take myself back to 2004, so 20 years ago, um, we were specializing in measuring thousands and thousands of people in 3D. And I thought, well, couldn't this technology be used in healthcare? Um, I thought, well, how's it measured then? The body mass index. OK, what's that? It's just height versus weight. And that's it. So it didn't take body shape into account at all. Uh, it was a bit like a light bulb moment. I kind of thought, um, OK, what would be the best thing to do? It would actually be to work out where the weight is. And the good thing about digital avatars is effectively you can divide them up and you can work out where the volume is 
in someone's body uh, and once i realized that i thought okay that's really simple really easy to understand but how difficult is it to do well it's taken 15 years but we found it validated by mayo clinic in the us by the medical research council in the uk and others um who have supported it with trials in africa and the technology now just means two photos from a smartphone so it's taken 15 years to get to that stage but I'm really proud and very excited about it because I think we genuinely have produced something that actually measures individual risk better than BMI ever can because it was never meant to be used for that. The guy who deserves credit in 1835 who invented it, he was a brilliant Belgian mathematician, but he meant it to be used for populations. He never meant it to be used for individuals. So BVI fills that gap that BMI doesn't. So BVI then gives you uh, what kind of predictive indicators? It gives predictive indicators on um, diabetes, hypertension, and cardiovascular risk. Mayo Clinic have done an abstract, which is going to a full paper, I believe, in June. Uh, and their results in the abstract show that, um, in their view, um, BVI is 19% better than BMI at prediction of those risk factors. So... Uh, yeah, it, it's kind of obvious to the human eye, but it it, it 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 still needs to be validated and proven. And your group has done the work. Uh, you, you created the solution, correct? Yeah, we have. Yeah, we're, we're seen as pioneers in the 3D field, and we have been since 1996, I think. Um, but yeah, I, we've created it all from that uh, time. Obviously, a lot of time, a lot of money that's gone into that. Um, but I'm really excited about where we are because the technology allows us to now deliver this at scale. And most people in the world have some kind of smartphone or access to a camera, which makes which makes our job a lot easier. I think I think the biggest take out, the biggest recommendation is yeah, you know, what unites us all. And I think what unites us all is as individuals, we all want to live as long as possible. And we will do anything we possibly can to do that. Eating well, you know, getting fit. Um, but it doesn't matter what you do. You have to start with measuring it properly in the first place. If you don't measure something, then you cannot tell what the differences are further down the line that allow you to make those changes in your lifestyle that means you will live longer. Uh, and there aren't many people who won't want to live a healthier, longer lifestyle. And that's what this will do, it provide better data. Uh, BVI provides better input for that. And I think that's the biggest takeaway for me is that how that's how I think people see themselves and how they want to see the rest of their lives. And that is an incredibly important thing. And knowing what your real health risk is um, based on the data on your body shape is an incredibly good starting point. So thank you, Richard. I mean, those are really compelling points to, to leave our audience and uh, appreciate you sharing so many of the, your insights uh, with my audience. No, thank you. No, it's been a pleasure. And, and I think I'm really genuinely excited about what the future will bring now, because I think the, the technology works. What started off as a simple idea is now real. And uh, yeah, I, it, it was just great to see people adopting that and using it you know wherever it's needed thank you for listening to the brand called you videocast and podcast a platform that brings you knowledge experience and wisdom of hundreds of successful individuals from around the world do visit our website www.tbcy.in to watch and listen to the stories of many more individuals you can also follow us on youtube Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Just search for the brand called you.